Hi, everybody. Annette here, also known as Grandma D. We are here today for another story time video. And today I'm super excited because we're continuing our series, Six with Seuss. And today we are going to read the third story in the series, Horton Hatches the Egg. This is a wonderful, funny, quirky story about Horton who sits on an egg. <laughs> and I hope you're going to love it. Uh, Dr. Seuss is wonderful. His wit and his way with rhyme and his way of telling stories leaves us on the edge of our seats sometimes, not knowing what's coming next. So, um, without further ado, we are going to get started with the story. Horton Hatches the Egg Sighed Macy, a lazy bird hatching an egg. I'm tired and I'm bored, and I've kind got kinks in my legs from sitting, just sitting here day after day. It's work. How I hate it. I'd much rather play. I'd take a vacation, fly off for a rest, if I could find someone to stay on my nest. If I could find someone... I'd fly away free. There's Maisie sitting on her nest, wishing that she could go play. Then Horton the elephant passed by her tree. Hello, called the lazy bird, smiling her best. You've nothing to do, and I do need a rest. Would you like to sit on the egg in my nest? <laughs> Imagine Horton getting up in that little tiny tree. The elephant laughed. Why, of all silly things, I haven't feathers. I haven't wings. Me on your egg? Why, that doesn't make sense. Your egg is so small. And ma'am... And I'm so immense. Tut, tut, answered Maisie. I know you're not small, but I'm sure you can do it. No trouble at all. Just sit on it softly. You're gentle and kind. Come be a good fellow. I know you won't mind. I can't, said the elephant. Please, begged the bird. I won't be gone long, sir. I give you my word. I'll hurry right back. Why, I'll never be missed. What do you think? <laughs> I think it's kind of silly. <laughs> Very well, said the elephant. Since you insist, you want a vacation? Go fly off and take it. I'll sit on your egg, and I'll try not to break it. I'll stay and be faithful. I mean what I say. Toodaloo, sang out Maisie and fluttered away. See the egg in the nest? Hmm. The first thing to do, murmured Horton, let's see. <clears throat> the first thing to do is to prop up this tree and make it much stronger. That has to be done before I get on it. I must weigh a ton. See, he's propping up the tree so he can climb up there and have a sit. <laughs> then carefully, tenderly, gently, he crept up the trunk to the nest where the little egg slept. See the little egg, the little red egg up there? Do <laughs> you think the tree's going to hold him? I'm not confident about those sticks holding the tree up either. Mm -hmm. Then Horton the elephant smiled, now that's that. And he sat, and he sat, and he sat, and he sat.
and he sat all that day, and he kept the egg warm, and he sat all that night through a terrible storm. It poured, and it lightened, it thundered, it rumbled. This isn't much fun, the poor elephant grumbled. I wish she'd come back, because I'm cold and I'm wet. I hope that Maisie Bird doesn't forget. Look at the storm. Oh, my goodness. And the lightning. There's the nest on the poor tree. Court is soaking wet. But Maisie, by this time, was far beyond reach, enjoying the sunshine way off in Palm Beach. You know where Palm Beach is? Florida. And having such a wonderful rest, decided she'd never go back to her nest. There she is up in the top of the tree, way up at the top, getting some sunshine. Poor Horton. <laughs> oh, no. So Horton kept sitting there day after day, and soon it was autumn. The leaves blew away. And then came the winter, the snow and the sleet, and icicles hung from his trunk and his feet. But Horton kept sitting and said with a sneeze, I'll stay on this egg and I won't let it freeze. I mean what I said and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful, 100%. Poor Horton, he's been there a while. So poor Horton sat there the whole winter through and then came the springtime with troubles anew. His friends gathered round and they shouted with glee, Look, Horton, the elephant's up in a tree. They taunted, they teased him. They yelled, how absurd. Old Horton, the elephant, thinks he's a bird. <laughs> Poor Horton. Do you know what it's like to be teased? You get teased at all at school. Sometimes it's not very fun. They laughed and they laughed. Then they all ran away, and Horton was lonely. He wanted to play, but he sat on the egg and continued to say, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. An elephant is faithful, 100%. Way up there, way up there in the tree. There go the animals running away and laughing. Mm. No matter what happens, this egg must be tended. But poor Horton's troubles were far from ended. For what? For while Horton sat there, so faithful, so kind, three hunters came sneaking up softly behind. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> he heard the men's footsteps. He turned with a start. Three rifles were aiming right straight at his heart. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Poor Horton. He's trying to do a good deed, and look what's happening. Did he run? He did not. Horton stayed on that nest. He held his head high, and he threw out his chest. And he looked at the hunters as much to say, Shoot if you must, but I won't run away. I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful. How much? One hundred percent. Look at that. No fear in his eyes. He's going to do the right thing no matter what. But the men didn't shoot. Much to Horton's surprise, they dropped their three guns, and they stared with wide eyes. Look, they all shouted. Can such a thing be an elephant sitting on top of a tree? It's strange. It's amazing. It's wonderful. New. No. Don't shoot him. We'll catch him. That's just what we'll do. Let's take him alive. Why, he is terribly funny. We'll sell him back home to a circus for money. Oh, my goodness. Horton's in big trouble now. First it was the weather. 
and the animals, now the hunters. And the first thing he knew, they had built a big wagon with ropes on the front for pulleys to drag on. They dug up his tree and they put it inside with Horton so sad that he practically cried. We're off, the men shouted, and off they all went with Horton unhappy. How much? 100%. Look at that. Up out of the jungle, up into the sky, up over the mountains, 10,000 feet high. Then down, down the mountains and down to the sea went the cart with the elephant, egg, nest, and tree. <laughs> There's Horton way up on top. Look at that giant mountain. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe those men could pull that over the mountain. Maybe. Then out of the wagon and onto a ship. Out over the ocean. And oh, what a trip. Rolling and tossing and splashed with the spray. And Horton said, day after day after day, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. But, oh, I am seasick. 100%. I think I'd be seasick, too. <laughs> After bobbing around for two weeks like a cork, they landed at last in the town of New York. All ashore, the men shouted, and down with a lurch went Horton the Elephant, still on his perch. Tied onto a board that could just scarcely hold him, bump Horton landed, and then the men sold him. Look at that. There's the two men talking money, selling Horton. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Sold to a circus. Then week after week, they showed him to people at 10 cents a peak. They took him to Boston, to Kalamazoo, Chicago, Weekwen, and Washington, too. To Dayton, Ohio. St. Paul, Minnesota, to Wichita, Kansas, to Drake, North Dakota. And everywhere, thousands of folks flocked to see and laughed at the elephant up in a tree. Poor Horton grew sadder the farther he went, but he said as he sat in the hot, noisy tent, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. An elephant is faithful. 100%. Then one day, the circus show happened to reach a town way down south, not so far from Palm Beach. And dwaddling along, way up high in the sky, who of all people should chance fly by? But that old good for nothing bird, runaway Maisie, still on vacation and still just as lazy. And spying the flags and the tents just below, she sang out, What fun! Why, I'll go to the show! Uh oh, I wonder what's going to happen now. And she swooped from the clouds through an open tent door. Good gracious, gasped Maisie. I've seen you before. Poor Horton looked up with his face white as chalk. He started to speak, but before he could talk. I wonder what's going to happen. What do you think? There rang out the noisiest, ear-splitting squeaks from the egg that he'd sat on for 51 weeks. That's a long time. A thumping, a bumping, a wild, alive scratching. My 
shouted Horton. My egg! Why, it's hatching! Look at there! Finally! But it's mine, screamed the bird when she heard the egg crack. The work was all done. Now she wanted it back. It's my egg, she sputtered. You stole it from me. Get off my nest and get out of my tree. Poor Horton back down with a sad, heavy heart. Look at that. You think that's right? I don't think so. But at that very instant, the egg burst apart and out of the pieces of red and white shell from the egg that he'd sat on so long and so well, Horton the elephant saw something whiz. It had ears and a tail and a trunk, just like his. Look at that. Aww. Isn't that cute? Look how happy Horton is. And the people came shouting, What's all this about? They looked and they stared with their eyes popping out. Then they cheered and they cheered and they cheered more and more. They'd never seen anything like it before. My goodness, my gracious, they shouted, My word! It's something brand new. It's an elephant bird! And it should be, it should be, it should be like that. Because Horton was faithful. He sat and he sat. He meant what he said and he said what he meant. Look at Maisie down in the corner. She's not very happy. <laughs> Serves her right. And they sent him home happy. One hundred percent. The end. Look at that. Horton finally made it back home. He's got his little baby up there on his trunk. There's everybody taking him home in a nice trailer on the back of a car. All the other animals are there to greet him. What a wonderful story. What a brave and loyal elephant Horton is. I hope that you're like Horton, that you're faithful and loving and finish what you start. And I hope that you don't get teased at school and I hope that you enjoy school and you have a lot of friends and you have a wonderful day at school. Um, I just want to say that Grandma D loves you and I care about you. And you're very important and very special to me. And next time we get together, we're going to read the next story in our series from Dr. Seuss called Yertle the Turtle. <laughs> ah, this is going to be another funny story. Old Yertle. Who knows what kind of antics he'll get into. So I hope you enjoyed our story today. Wherever you are in the world, whether you're getting ready to go to bed at night or getting up in the morning, coming home from school or getting ready to go to school. I hope that you enjoyed our story time together today as much as I did. So this is Grandma D. Sending you warm, warm hugs because I love you and butterfly kisses. Until next time, when we come back and we read the next series, or the next story in our series from Dr. Seuss, Yertle the Turtle. And we also have another book coming up. This is another favorite. My first puppy. We will come and we'll read this book next week. And we'll continue our series with Dr. Seuss. 
So I hope that you'll join me. And in the meantime, I hope that you will subscribe to my channel. Like this video if you enjoy Dr. Seuss and reading with Grandma. And ring the notification bell so that you'll be notified when the next story comes up. So with that said, this is Grandma D signing off for today. I love you. You have a great day. Bye-bye.